When you take creatine, many biological changes begin to happen inside your body. It's most well known for being a nutritional supplement used to increase muscle mass and strength, but there are many other benefits, uses, and effects that occur after taking creatine. It's already naturally produced in the human body from the amino acids glycine and arginine, which are found in many common foods including red meat and fish. But supplementing with creatine does more than most people think. So that's why today I want to go over 10 things that most people don't know and don't tell you about creatine. And the first lesser known fact is that creatine can actually improve your cognitive function. So counter to the phrase all bronze and no brains, taking creatine can actually help improve the function of your brain and your muscles. For example, a study from the University of Sydney found that creatine supplementation improved the cognitive function of elderly individuals both mentally and physically. The researchers found that this was achieved through an increase in brain energy metabolism and an improvement in memory. Other studies also have found similar effects. Take for example another study that showed that short-term creatine supplementation can lead to an improvement in cognitive tasks such as memory, reasoning, and intelligence. This suggests that creatine could potentially have a range of beneficial effects on cognitive performance for people of all different ages. Some studies have also demonstrated that creatine can have positive effects on other aspects of mental health, such as reducing stress and anxiety, and even improving mood and sleep quality. This is likely due to the supplement's ability to help the body produce more energy, which can directly improve overall well-being. Another thing that creatine can do is it can help improve bone health. This is due to its ability to increase muscle mass, which can in turn lead to an increase in bone density. Research has shown that taking creatine can lead to an increase in bone mineral content, which is important for bone health and strength. One of the ways it provides this benefit is by increasing calcium absorption and protein synthesis. Both of these are important for strong bones. Everyone loses bone density as they age. One of the best activities that you can do to maintain good bone density is to lift weights. When you lift weights, your bones are put under direct pressure from the weights that you're lifting, and also they experience tension from the muscle tendons pulling on the bones. This results in adaptations that make your bones thicker and stronger, and creatine is surprisingly able to assist with this process of developing bone density and reducing the risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia. Another fact that most people don't know is that creatine has been linked to a reduction in inflammation. This is due to its ability to reduce the production of certain pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. Research has also shown that supplementing with creatine can reduce the markers of oxidative stress, which is beneficial for reducing inflammation. One of the ways that it does this is by reducing the activity of the enzyme cyclooxygenase. It has also been shown to reduce inflammatory markers such as leukotrienes and prostaglandins. These hormones are produced in response to injury or infection. By supplementing with creatine, you can reduce the production of these hormones and reduce inflammation. It's also worth mentioning that creatine can help with cellular antioxidant activity and with the process of discarding free radicals. All of this can help reduce the risk of chronic diseases that are associated with inflammation such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. This actually brings me to my next point. Creatine can help reduce muscle soreness and fatigue. This is due to creatine's ability to increase the production of phosphocreatine, which helps delay fatigue by providing the muscles with more energy. It assists in the formation of adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. ATP is the key molecule that your cells use for energy, and it constantly has to be resynthesized within your body. Creatine increases phosphocreatine stores, and that allows you to produce more ATP to provide your muscles with more energy. On top of that, it can help reduce muscle damage, which is one of the main causes of soreness. Studies have also shown that creatine supplementation can lead to an increase in muscle creatine content and a decrease in muscle damage, both of which can help reduce muscle soreness and fatigue. One of the ways that creatine can do this is by increasing the rate of muscle protein synthesis, which is important for muscle growth and muscle repair. This can help improve the body's ability to recover from exercise at a faster rate and in turn reduce muscle protein breakdown and muscle soreness. So I wouldn't take creatine just to reduce muscle soreness, but it's an awesome added benefit if you're already looking to take creatine for other reasons like gaining muscle strength and improving athletic performance. Improving performance is actually what creatine is best known for, but this isn't just in the realm of bodybuilding and fitness modeling. Research has shown that it can be very effective for improving athletic performance in a variety of sports. For example, it's proven that it can lead to improved sprinting, jumping, and throwing performance. This can translate over to many different sports ranging from volleyball to baseball to boxing. 
The fact that it can help improve strength and power can also translate as a direct benefit for many types of athletes other than bodybuilders and powerlifters. But it doesn't just stop at strength and power, it also improves overall endurance, allowing athletes to perform better over longer periods of time. Studies have shown that creatine can lead to an increase in the amount of time it takes to hit exhaustion during exercise. This can be highly beneficial for athletes who need to increase how long it takes for their muscles to start to feel that fatigue. It's also been found to improve reaction times, helping athletes react quicker and make better decisions in the heat of the moment. Obviously, there are also beneficial effects that translate to sports from the reduction of fatigue and muscle damage, as I mentioned earlier. This allows athletes to recover faster between matches or training sessions, helping them train harder and take on an overall greater training volume each week. Now, even though most people are aware that creatine helps increase muscle mass, they don't know that water retention happens to be one of the influential factors in this process. When creatine is taken into a muscle cell, it also draws water into that cell. The exact mechanism for how this works isn't fully understood yet, but we know for sure that the result is increased water retention, which can obviously also lead to an increase in your body weight. So you can expect to weigh anywhere from one and a half to three and a half more pounds after a week of creatine loading due to water weight. If you're retaining more water in your muscles, they'll instantly look bigger and fuller just from the added water weight alone. This assists with muscle growth because the boost in muscle cellular hydration increases the pressure placed against the cell membranes and the cytoskeletons found within your muscle cells. So your muscle cells perceive this as a threat to their integrity, which can increase anabolic signaling, leading to a more favorable protein turnover rate. This is one of the ways that creatine can lead to an increase in muscle protein synthesis. This can help you build muscle faster since building muscle is all about synthesizing protein at a higher, faster rate than the amount that routinely gets broken down on a daily basis. There are other things that also contribute to more muscle growth from creatine. Like I said, creatine has the ability to increase the production of phosphocreatine, which is a molecule that's used to store and supply energy to your muscle cells. Essentially, an increase in phosphocreatine allows the muscle cells to produce more energy and force output, which can in turn lead to increased muscle mass. Let's move on to another point that you may have never heard of before. Creatine can help with diabetes management. In fact, it's been linked to an improvement in insulin sensitivity and glucose control, which can be beneficial for those with diabetes. This is once again due to creatine's ability to increase the production of phosphocreatine, which assists with glucose uptake in muscle cells. Research has also shown that supplementing with creatine can lead to an increase in insulin sensitivity, which can help diabetics better manage their blood sugar levels. Keep in mind that the benefit that creatine alone will provide for diabetes is nowhere near as great as the benefits that you'll get from exercising and maintaining a clean overall diet. That's what will lead to the most improvements in blood sugar and insulin sensitivity. Creatine is more like the cherry on top. Aside from assisting with diabetes, it can also help reduce blood pressure. It's been linked to a reduction in blood pressure by increasing the efficiency of the heart muscle. When your heart operates more efficiently, your blood pressure and heart rate tends to go down because your heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood throughout your entire body. Research also shows that taking creatine can lead to an overall improvement in vascular health, which can further help reduce your blood pressure. Another thing that you wouldn't associate with creatine off the top of your head is its ability to help reduce body fat. Studies have specifically shown that creatine can lead to an increase in lean body mass or muscle mass while simultaneously creating a decrease in fat mass, which can help you improve your overall body composition. By increasing muscle mass, your resting metabolic rate will rise. This is because all of that muscle mass costs a lot of energy to maintain, so your body will burn more calories throughout the day, leading to a reduction in fat. Keep in mind, fat loss and weight loss are not the same thing. There is a very high chance that your body weight will actually increase after your muscles become fully saturated with creatine. Once again, this is due to the increase in water retention and water weight. But just because your weight goes up from more water retention doesn't mean that your body fat percentage can't go down at the same time. This once again is mostly influenced by diet, but creatine's benefits of adding more muscle, improving your metabolism, and helping you push yourself harder during your workouts can all also help contribute to a reduction in body fat. Last but not least, creatine supplementation may also play a role in the treatment of certain neurological diseases and conditions. For example, creatine has been shown to have a neuroprotective effect in animal models of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It also may be beneficial in treating other neurological conditions such as Huntington's disease and traumatic brain injury. 
Creatine's ability to help with neurodegenerative diseases is tied to phosphocreatine in the brain. Studies have shown that increasing phosphocreatine levels in the brain helps supply energy to the brain, which may be beneficial in the treatment of all these different neurological diseases. While more research is needed to fully understand the potential therapeutic benefits of creatine for neurological diseases, it is clear that creatine plays an important role in brain function and may contribute to treatment plans for those with these neurological problems. So those are 10 things that most people don't realize creatine can do for you. If you wanna get more info and more details and learn how to actually take creatine for optimal muscle growth and improve performance, I'll link up a video in the description and at the end of this video. That video will help you figure out how much creatine you should take, when you should take it, and it'll answer all the questions you have about how to supplement with creatine. Remember that even though creatine is probably one of the best natural supplements available that you can take from muscle growth, it's never going to replace consistently doing the right thing with your diet and your workout plan. So if you want any extra help with that, whether it's your diet or your workout plan, you should try my free six-week shred. You'll get a full workout plan as well as a meal plan based on your preferences, a 42 recipe cookbook, and a coach to guide you through the whole process. To grab your spot in the six-week shred, all you have to do is click the link in the description below or visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.